Welcome to the podcast Konmoto. My name is Christina Petersen. I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner and I live in northern Germany, close to Hamburg in Lübeck. And this is a series of conversations about the Feldenkrais method. And today I'm very um, happy about to talk with Paria Doctor. I think she's living in Canada, so quite far away from me, but she is also highly fascinated from the Fancross method. And I'm so curious to hear her journey into the um, Fancross method and about her background. And so, hello, Faria. Well, hello. Thank you for the lovely introduction, Christina. And yes, I am in Canada. I am very close to Niagara Falls on the Canadian side in Southern Ontario. And um, I haven't lived here all my life. I've, I've been in a variety of different places, but uh, you were asking a little bit about my background and how I ended up, how did I end up as a Feldenkrais practitioner? Uh, well, maybe I should start with um, well, what comes to my mind is uh, I grew up with a father as a doctor. So I was surrounded by a lot of medical books, anatomy books, surgery books. I would hear him talking and doing consultations on the phone. So my, my interest in human, I would say, anatomy and physiology really came from a young age. And I thought that my dad was a doctor, um, I thought I would want to be one too, because I found it really fascinating. And so that led me to university and studying biology and uh, loving, loving what I was learning. But I soon discovered that I had some learning issues. I had ADD and I had a really difficult time in academia. That was not my skill. And so when one door closes, another opens. And I found that I had a, a real skill in feeling and sensing. I had kinesthetic. Um, my body intelligence, my body awareness was quite good. And so after university, I ended up going to a 2200 hour massage therapy program in Ontario, in Canada. And from there, I learned a lot of anatomy, a lot of physiology, where muscles attach. And, um, and so that sort of brought me deeper into understanding human, not necessarily movement, but where things are, where they're attached and what they do. And um, uh, just this amazing fortuitous event happened where I was very involved with the Massage Therapy Association at the time, and I won a gift certificate to a course, uh, a Feldenkrais course. And I went to the course and was blown away. That was it. I was hooked. And I realized that that was my, that was the answer to what I wanted to know and wanted to learn. And I realized too, that it was teaching me how to learn. And I didn't know it at the time, but um, when I went into the Feldenkrais, uh, I did a training in Toronto, in Canada, and uh, completed my Feldenkrais training in 2004. And uh, have been working pretty much full time, uh, and sometimes combining my skills as a massage therapist, but primarily doing a lot of work with um, with the Feldenkrais method, te teaching people uh, how to understand movement and repatterning movement. And um, yeah, so that's sort of my trajectory uh, to the, the Feldenkrais world. Um, why breathing? Well, that, that is sort of an, another sort of undercurrent uh, trajectory for me. And that's a more personal story. Um, breathing as a child was always an issue for me. I had a lot of allergies. 
I couldn't breathe through my nose very much. Um, and so I had, I struggled with breathing. Um, and uh, at the age of 14, I uh, watched my mom pass away from lung cancer. And during that pretty traumatic time, I developed asthma. So that's sort of like, well, you know, I developed asthma during that time. I had a lot of trouble with breathing. And over time, I became more and more curious about breathing. But it wasn't until the Feldenkrais method that I started to understand what was affecting my breathing patterns. And it just opened the world to understanding uh, how everything works inside, which I didn't really know before. Even with an anatomy training, you don't really understand how to feel function, how to feel how things move. And so uh, when I was studying the Feldenkrais method, I was fascinated with the breathing lessons. There are a lot of breathing lessons that Moshe Feldenkrais taught. And, um, and so I found that really interesting. And that, again, that led me to going a little deeper in understanding breath in terms of uh, functional patterns. So you can see behind me, I have a, a, a little facial um, side view of the nose and the sinuses. And this is something I started studying with Patrick McEwen, who wrote um, The Oxygen Advantage, and which I have the book right here. I started studying with this person, and I decided to uh, become a, a Buteco method instructor. So I've been studying um, a certification program with the Buteco method. And that's what really gave me the tools to teach how to deal with difficult breathing patterns. To I, I could I knew I could as a Feldenkrais practitioner I could identify when people were struggling, but the Potato method gave me some concrete uh, approaches to help people repattern movement. So I. I was hearing your, your journey from struggling with learning at the beginning um, and it was more obvious when you started to study biology and all the things that it is, it came clear to you that this kind of approaching more knowledge, it's not your way. Mm. Yeah, but you, you found out that there is another world, how to get in contact to this. Um, so for me, it's quite a bit the same. So that by doing the massage training, suddenly all this, um, would say the stuff to learn, all the muscles where they're connected, the name, all these things, immediately when you are combining this with something with doing with feeling with touching then suddenly it was so easy to to learn all this dry stuff yes that before maybe wasn't so easy for you but now with with doing with movement inside and with experience experiencing something then then it was so much easier for you that yeah. that leads me to to maybe to point out how the fan class method works because if this is your first contact with the fan class method our viewers our listeners that um some people sometimes so um surprise uh, when you say maybe we're doing something about breathing that you feel your breath that you will be lead from the practitioner to feel what is going on and then also we bring in some information but mainly you are doing by yourself the educational thing because you are feeling what is going on so um, i thought yeah. you 
what you said is very good an example for um, how we we are coming to to learn something to find um, information or that something will be so clear that yeah you learned it and you can name it but we approach it from the experiencing side that you feel it you touch it you you move it and then you can learn it so easily mm -hmm. um, yeah. i don't know about the book and the man who wrote it so it's very interesting to hear about it and i will check out it and um, maybe it's now today you are ready to read something and to to learn easier in an academical way is it like this i don't know um well it's 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 interesting because when you when you feel something you know it like the feeling sensing and feeling helps you to know in an embodied way when you embody you know it you know it inside and if it's an idea you can go from the idea to embodying but it's much easier if you feel it first and then it's like oh yeah that that training that i had or oh that information that i learned about the diaphragm makes so much sense to me now because i can feel it inside so um I think that's what you were kind of getting at, is that... I think so, that yeah. it's, it's quite interesting. And, um, and I understand why you're so interesting in the breathing thing with your family background. So this is really something what you felt, what is so important in your life. And how do you found a way to... Um, to bring it more into your work and now at the moment we have this um, that a lot of people are struggling with dealing with the mask and that you yes. you brought something into the world <laughs> um, with Feldenkrais method and maybe how to wear a mask or can you yeah Please yeah. explain more about it. Let me, let me tell you a little bit more about, um, in my practice, I was discovering that a lot of people who would come in, I would observe that they had breathing patterns that weren't helping them. I saw a lot of people who uh, were hyperventilating. You know, near the end of the lesson, their breathing is beautiful and easy and soft, but their natural day-to-day -day pattern was getting them into a lot of trouble and so as as a practitioner i started observing the movement of breath through their chest in their belly in their ribs and of course if you're stiff with the breathing so are the ribs so so is the body right and this is all tied to emotion as well so the longer i am in my practice the more I am seeing that there's this fundamental primal pattern that, that um, can sometimes be a hindrance to shifting movement patterns. So this is, I think this is such a primal primary theme. The breath is everything. And once we understand what we're doing, we have much better uh, control over our functioning. And, um, and as, as a Feldenkrais practitioner, I was realizing that when COVID hit, people were very stressed out. And they were talking about struggling wearing a mask. They were talking about getting headaches. Um, there was a lot of distress and I knew I had some skills to teach people how to reduce the stress and make it really easy and comfortable to live behind a mask. And as you know, in most countries now, you can't go anywhere indoors unless you have a mask on. I know in Canada, you walk into a store, 
or a restaurant, anywhere that's enclosed, you have to put the mask on to protect from transmission and for getting a potential load, a viral load. The problem with being indoors is that the viral load indoors can build over time. And so wearing something that'll prevent moisture spreading uh, big, uh, far distances is a really good idea. So I know some, there's a lot of controversy around wearing a mask. And I have talked to, um, I've read a lot about it. I've, I've talked to an epidemiologist about it. We actually invited him, Dr. Turner Osler, to um, some uh, association meetings. And he, his belief is that you are decreasing transmission. Even though there is a little bit of leakage out the side, um, you are reducing transmission quite a lot. And the more people are able to feel comfortable, and I know some people can't, they, are, they just cannot wear it for, for a variety of health reasons and emotional reasons. And we need to also step back and be compassionate towards people who are struggling and do the best we can for ourselves. And so I saw this, I saw all this struggle and difficulty that people were having. And I thought I need to do something about this. Um, so I decided to teach uh, a class. I did a class by donation on Eventbrite. And uh, the theme was how to breathe easier behind a mask. And I since have put it on my website. I have a free, a free recording there for anyone who wants to um, explore that idea. But um, there are some key things that people are struggling with. There's three major issues with mask wearing. People are breathing through their mouth when they put the mask on. People are breathing too hard and too fast. So you can imagine that creates a lot of steam, a lot of breeze, right? The glasses fog up because there's so much wind going through this, the mask, and it gets hot. So the more you breathe through your mouth, the more you're pushing out a lot of heat. So I've learned a great deal about uh, the power of breathing through the nose and restricting breathing through the mouth because you know from this model that I have here you can see that this pink area in in this model that's all nose uh, space behind the nose this is the nasal passages and the sinuses okay and so this is the place where the air it gets filtered it gets warmed before it goes down your throat um, it creates enough resistance so that your diaphragm can move more effectively. And when your diaphragm moves more effectively, there's better uh, airflow through the lungs. The moment you switch to a mouth breath, uh, your anxiety will increase. You're pushing out too much carbon dioxide. And, um, when that happens, uh, the, uh, well, I should go back a step. So people are, they're doing those three things that are making it difficult. And if they learn not to do those three things, the breathing behind a mask can become very, very easy. And I know this because I've done it myself. I work, you know, and I work behind a mask. I go to the store and I'm behind a mask. I have no problems. And I can feel comfortable, calm, and safe. So I wanted to teach people how to do that and feel that. I think I want to um, ask you if you can bring it again a little bit more to the surface. What is the difference between breathing through the nose? You, you said something about the interplay between the nose breathing and the diaphragm. I, I caught it a, a bit, but maybe can you 
repeat it again. Uh, well, why don't you why don't you try it? So anyone who's listening, just just take a pinch your nose and hold it closed, and take a few breaths just through your mouth. Just feel what that's like. What do you feel in your body? And then take your hand away and close your mouth. Put and rest your tongue kind of on the roof of your mouth, comfortably, somewhere comfortable. And just breathe through your nose for a few cycles and notice the difference in your body. What do you feel in your throat, the back of your throat? What do you feel in your chest, in your belly, in your back maybe? Does the breathing speed change? Does the movement change through your body? And you also, the difference too, is that when you're breathing in through your nose, can you feel the breeze in the back of your throat? And when you breathe out through your nose, you might feel that the air is warmer coming up through the back of your throat and out through the nose. When you breathe through your mouth, if you open your mouth and do a couple of mouth breaths, you might feel that the air is kind of cool in the back. It hits the back of the throat. It dries the back of the throat. And it can irritate the back of the throat. So you're pulling in a lot of cool air into your lungs when you breathe through your mouth. When you switch to your nasal breath, just feel what that's like. It changes, it softens the air. It's almost like the, what the air goes through the nose and it runs through lots of different nooks and crannies and goes past areas that are um, feeling the air, trapping things that aren't supposed to be there which is great for your immune system. You don't want to um, introduce a virus directly into your throat and down into your lungs. You want to trap it in your nasal passages. So it's a protective mechanism. Amazing, amazing. So, that the, so what I felt is that Immediately when I changed to breathing through the nose, my diaphragm softened mm -hmm. and uh, it was more fully bred. So that was something I, yeah, I did it a lot in my life only to breathe through the nose, but I wasn't aware of what is going on, what's, what is the difference? And also I felt the dry air in my throat and mm -hmm. That, that this is not so, uh, so comfortable. Also, this will dry my, um, my voice organs and maybe also bring my, um, yes, my voice into trouble. And I think, so what we know about the COVID is that it starts more in the nose and in the throat, but it is going down and then the real <laughs> travel starts and um, yes of course if we are breathing through the mouth yes it, it's carrying immediately all the the gums into your lungs without any protection so but i don't want to <laughs> bring the people into uh, fear about um, mouth breathing something sometimes it's it's very good to do this but the most of the time it's good to breathe through the nose but Faria I know it's not so easy for a lot of people oh. to, to breathe right all the time to the nose what what are you doing in this situation when people say I know this and I want to but I can't it's so mm -hmm. this um, Sticky, it's, I feel so close there. What, what can they do? Close behind the mask, yeah. So what I, what I do is I suggest um, that people, uh, I guide them through 
a lesson to make their breath, uh, to help them feel a calmer rhythm, first of all. We'll have to establish a calm rhythm in the breath and know how to find it over and over again whenever you need it. So I tell people that when they breathe through their nose, can they feel that as they're doing that, that they're accessing all this lung tissue. There's so much space. There's so much space in the face, in the back of the throat, that, that, that when they breathe through the nose, they're actually bringing in more air than through the mouth. They're getting more oxygen than through the mouth. It's much more efficient. So as soon as people realize that, it helps them shift a little bit and think, okay, you know, I, I, I'm now, if I can tell myself that when I breathe through my nose, that I'm getting more oxygen, I'm getting protection, and I'm feeling calmer. The other thing about nose breathing, which is really fascinating, is that we have receptors in our nose that traps nitric oxide. What nitric oxide does is it's a vaso, it's a dilator, bronchial, not a vaso, a bronchial dilator. So it goes in and it helps the lungs open a bit more. Okay, this is so important, right? You want, you want the bronchioles, the tubules in the lung to, to open up. Well, what does that do? It improves flow to the alveoli, the place where the exchange happens in the lungs. So when you breathe through your nose, you're actually really maximizing airflow to your lungs. So that's another <laughs> benefit. That's another benefit. And when, more, when people begin to understand that, then they can practice it. They can practice switching. Every once in a while they can, sometimes I'll tell people, you know, just take a little piece of tape during the day if you're home by yourself and you're on the computer and you tend to open your mouth a lot then just put a little band-aid over your lips or a little sticky note over your lips just to remind yourself that, that oh my mouth popped open there i don't need to do that i'm i'm breathing so much better through my nose now some people do get plugged up but mouth breathing causes nasal congestion Okay, so it irritates the sinuses if you mouth breathe and nas the nasal area gets quite congested. So there are techniques in the Pateco method that helps you unblock your nose so that you can breathe through your nose. But it, if we go back to the theme of breathing through a mask and sensing the benefits and the flow through the nose into the sinuses, into the back of the throat, and if you could even imagine this as you're breathing right now, as you're breathing right now, just feel that you have all this space in your skull and that as the air washes in, it gets filtered. And as it goes down into your trachea and goes down into the lung tissue, you can feel this air that's been filtered and warmed and that that the lungs can fill, but where are the lungs? This is an interesting thing. Some people think it's just in the front, but actually we have a lot of space in our back. So when I think about, when I tell people about how the lungs fill through my lesson, you can think of them almost like oozing into the back, into your lower back and creating all the space. So the lungs are very dependent on rib mobility too. When you evoke a sensation of space without effort, you evoke a relationship of space into the back, behind the shoulder blades, into the waist, down into the lower back, almost like this spongy, soft lung tissue is filling up and oozing down into your back, suddenly there's less friction. Because we often forget that 
our air passage is not in the front. A lot of people, when they breathe, they think about the front, but actually it goes down far back. So if you think of breathing into your back, it's a little more accurate. It'll create space in the throat. And you know, a lot of people who are singers would probably think about this too, that when the drawing air in, it's not all in the front. You don't want to create a lot of chest tension. You don't want to create a lot of diaphragmatic tension. You want it to be soft and light and easy. So switching also the idea that breath needs to be effortful and that it can be easy and it can be light. If you hear yourself breathing all the time, then you know that you're putting a little bit more effort in than you need to. It's akin to, I often will say it's like you're revving your engine all the time when you're breathing hard and you can hear your breath or you're causing constriction somewhere in either the back of the nose or the throat or someplace in the diaphragm or the chest. And so when, when people realize that actually it doesn't have to be noisy, it doesn't have to be hard. It can feel like nothing. And so that's a, that's a bit of a switch for people. Often when people are trained to breathe in Pilates and yoga and other disciplines, they see, for some reason, think that that technique is the right way to breathe. And so that they put a lot of work and effort into establishing an easy, uh, establishing a breath they think is a good breath. A good breath should feel effortless on a day-to-day -day basis, right? If you're up in the kitchen or at your desk working, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't be working hard with your breathing. So the, the concept of it being light and easy and flowing into your body and flowing out of your body through your nose, like a soft rhythm, like a wave, can help people calm their breathing pattern down so that it's so easy to have a mask over your face. It is now it is challenging if you're talking a lot. So if you're a person who has to be behind a mask and has to talk a lot, then you, there's um, a way to conserve the amount of air that you're pushing out of your mouth. So right now, as I'm talking, I'm trying to conserve how much air is going through my vocal cords. And again, this is something a singer would do, right? The conserving air. Uh, and so you don't want to blow it all out because then it'll sound a lot like this. You'll be breathy and out of breath all the time. So you want to conserve how much is leaking out when you're talking. And that will make it easier, again, behind the mask, then it doesn't get so hot behind the mask. So those are lots of, lots of different things to play around yeah. and, and to feel for. I think I start to understand more deeply what you want to, to bring into the, the mind of um, mm -hmm. what, what can help me to be more um, easy with the mask? Uh, how can it be more comfortable to be? Um, yes, and you know, I think in this area, and yeah. I think what I understand is the, the nose breathing is key for being more comfortable, to have more also own protection. And um, if I now I think can you tell a little bit about what other people can expect when they are hearing uh, your lesson? What what will yes what what will be there <laughs> for them? Well, I I start out by um, talking a little bit about how breathing works, um, how it flows in the body, and what to think about. So it. It's um, 
it helps people understand why they're doing what they're doing first of all. Um, and I haven't really gone into a great detail about what carbon dioxide does for our body, but um, I do talk a lot about it in my recording. And then um, I take a person through a lesson. They can be seated or lying down or in any position they, they feel comfortable in. And they take them through an awareness lesson. Just, a, you know, I gave you a little snippet of what it would be like. <clears throat> but a guided lesson of how uh, they can feel how they're breathing, feel where they feel breath, where they feel space. It's a very meditative lesson, but it helps a person really get inside and feel safe with their pattern of breathing and feel expansive. Because that's where you, you want people, you don't want to impose an idea. You want to, have them experience a felt sense of what it is to feel calm and to breathe in a way that is effortless. And then part of the lesson, I get people to put the mask on and continue the lesson with the mask. And then, come, and then come up and sit with the mask, continue the lesson with the mask so that they have that felt sense to go back to, oh, this is so easy. Oh, my glasses aren't fogging up anymore. You know, like I can, I can cope with this. I can deal with this. It doesn't have to be so frightening. I don't have to be so stressed out and stress myself out going outside and doing my errands. I can be very calm behind that mask. So a lot of people who have done my lesson have said that, have said, They've been able over to overcome their difficulties. Uh, they can um, teach now, or they can do their counseling very easily now behind a mask. They're so comfortable going out now with it. Um, their glasses aren't fogging up anymore. Uh, they're not getting irritated and bothered. <laughs> um, so it's it's helped a number of people. I sh I shared it with the Feldenkrais community and got a lot of positive feedback um, from them, which was really lovely, really lovely that your colleagues give you a, you know thumbs up. That's um, that feels good. And um, and so I decided just to leave it free on my website. And if people really like it and they want to make a donation, that's up to them. They can if they want to. Uh, but it's really there to. For this time, I mean, this is a difficult time in our lives with uh, COVID-19 and how do, we, how do we cope with it the best way we can and feel safe when we go out the door. It's really important. Yeah, and I think the Fancrest method has some tools that on one hand, you will learn more about yourself and you will understand more easy all the, the information stuff about the, the breathing because it's also combined with the feeling, the sensing of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it's also, yeah, that you have the possibility in a situation which is calm and protected to explore how is it to have the mask on? And if you have before the possibility to know more about your breath and how it's going on and to uh, discover more deeply your own possibility to breathe more free to the nose, then suddenly you can find out, wow, yes, it's easier than before to breathe even when I have a mask on. It's mm -hmm. not any more so important. And I, I appreciate that you, you did this and that you offer this for free uh, on your website. And I think who, who can or who want, it's so nice also to give something back when you, you get something and you are able to do this at the moment. And it will be also um, be a link here in the podcast that you have an easy access to the website from Paria. 
that you yeah. can find it immediately. And also, if you are able to speak German, I did a recording um, with another colleague here in Germany who was so um, passionate about you, what you did that she taught it in a group in between other practitioners. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And now it's even more easier for me to, to breathe and to be with the mask. And so uh, maybe you don't need to, uh, need to be able to speak German, but to understand <laughs> German, <laughs> then you can hear also this uh, conversation. Also, Evelyn will offer the free lesson in German. Yes, and also I will come up with a Zoom uh, meeting for German speaking people. Excellent. The more, I mean, the more it can reach people, the more it can help people, that's wonderful. And I'm really glad that she did that because, uh, yeah, I don't speak German. So I'm yes. very limited. I'm monolingual. I'm very, very <laughs> limited. Um, so I'm, I'm good in one language. And so that's great that she was able to do something in, in another. Um, the other thing, too, is that some people have additional challenges, like they have uh, other respiratory issues, COPD, asthma, uh, anxiety related breathing patterns um, and and so I've been offering online um, consultations if people want to get a little bit more one-on-one -on -one care but they're still kind of struggling with it they don't know what they're doing with their bodies that's making it hard but they know something isn't feeling right and uh, I'm I can easily do that over a computer on uh, on zoom on a screen yes i think that was very important that you um, talk about if you are really dealing with um, stronger issues with all the breathing what that it might be good to have a single lesson with someone who really goes with your own rhythm and that you can ask about uh, what what can I do in my special situation mm. because what I think what's really good for the general public all people will have a good from doing this lesson and even if you have more <laughs> stronger um, issues with the breathing but to really get comfortable uh, please go to Faria and make an appointment <laughs> so that she can help you more easy with this. And I think that's good to point it out. Wonderful. Thank good you. Offer. Thanks, Christina. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you inviting me to your podcast. It's been really lovely. Yeah, I have to say thank you that you brought this to me and that above uh, another person who got in contact with your recording and i think that um i will do a little bit different thing about this with the breathing and i see maybe also you can offer something in your group lessons that people who are in contact with you not only with this recording mm -hmm. but they they can see on your website your sure. your offering and that you will come up in these i think more regular classes also how to cope with this time but because I'm thinking it's not only the breathing mm. theme, what's there, that Feldenkrais, the Feldenkrais method is so good at the moment because we are dealing with change, how yeah. to change, but not sh um, with, with suddenly, I, I, brutal, I would say. Yeah. So yes. the, the environment is really changing so fast and so i um yeah brutal i i don't know maybe it's my <laughs> my lack of <laughs> explaining it but but the feldenkrais method is helping not to feel it's 
oh, it's different again. Mass, yes, no. And I have to be more aware of yeah. being close or far away from people and I have to stay home or I have to change everything. Our life, it's, it's around the world. And the Fancrass method is, in my perspective, a very good method to help to deal with all the change. It does. It, it helps you deal how to get comfortable with the uncomfortable, yeah. how to learn and be fluid when change comes your way, not how to restore balance, how to restore homeostasis and calmness. And yes, we get knocked around and we get startled and we get um, stressed out, but how, how quickly can we come back to feeling that sense of balance and safety in our system. Yes. That's what it does. It really does bring us back. And um, I, I think that uh, um, more and more information is coming out now about the Feldenkrais method and also, and also about breathing. It's become, because of the whole mask thing, more and more people are starting to realize that they have challenges with breathing. The mask amplifies the challenge, right? And so if you hate it and can't stand it and you're struggling with it and you're avoiding going to your favorite places because of it, there's an underlying challenge that is getting amplified by the problem by the issue of wearing a mask. So there's an underlying, underlying breathing problem, a breathing issue or an issue around overlaying anxiety and breath. I mean, they're like this, right? So um, the more people can find a sense of safety and comfort and restore balance, get comfortable with the uncomfortable, you know, the easier we can get through this very difficult time. Yes. Yeah. Christina, there's one other thing. There's this fantastic book out there um, called Breathe. Uh, it's written by uh, James Nestor. He's written a bunch of different books, but he's, he's written a book called Breathe. And I recommend, let me see if I can have it, uh, if I have a screen share of it. Um, it's, it's just remarkable. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I don't know if you can see this. I have it on, on um, Audible right now. I don't know if oh. you can see it. Um, but it is a fantastic book. And uh, it goes into how it all works, what the sinuses, what the nose does, and what an incredible area of... Um, that we've adapted to use. It's, it's going to blow your mind. You have to, you have to read that book. It's all about breathing, but it goes into the nitty gritty and it goes into, he writes a really good story too. So it's an easy read. Wonderful. I think all this information, you, we will put it on the website or maybe you can bring it also on your website that the people can. Yes, I will. I, mean, yeah. I plan to write uh, about that book actually yeah. and write a little um, review of it because it's and fundamental fundamentally will change how people think about breathing. And I see you're really good in the breathing thing that you are like a specialist in breathing that you not only did the Feldenkrais thing you also went into looking other books and to be really curious in this theme. And this is not, um, my special theme is more the sleep. And in one point I read something that there was um, investigation that people who are um, starting to know more about sleep. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, they are sleeping better. And this, w I, I know this is good to not to be so stuck in this, all oh, the mass and all the breathing, how can I deal with this? So if you go more deeper in this theme, what's going on with the breath? Oh, what is the technique, not, not technique, um, the 
mechanics yes the of mechanics. all of this how it is connected and then immediately you you will also have something good of it and i <laughs> we are to read these books because yeah. also I'm so interested in breathing. I also like to give workshops with breathing, and I wow. And since <laughs> you, you, love, you love this theme of sleep, you will love this book. Yes, yeah. There's a big because uh, it talks about it talks about sleep. He wow. talks about how how yes. yeah how no breathing helps with sleep as opposed to mouth breathing. It talks about carbon dioxide levels and oxygen levels and all of that and how uh, this issue around breathing is really affected by mouth breathing. Oh, so it's also yeah. good if you want to <laughs> have a better sleep quality yeah. <laughs> to go into this thing. I know that that's really uh, fascinating. So Faria, I think we we went into this corner look there to this and there but maybe you think we we are at an end or you think oh we forgot to talk about this um no i think we've kind of encapsulated the idea there's just one i would say there's one other thing that i might have forgotten to mention and that a lot of people who wear masks say that they're getting headaches because they're breathing in too much carbon dioxide mm. And that actually is not accurate. They're usually getting headaches because they're breathing too much. They're breathing too fast. So they're, they go into a hyperventilation mode without even realizing that they are. And so um, the increase in carbon dioxide is actually a benefit because the body needs carbon dioxide so that oxygen can get released from the hemoglobin and go into the tissues of the body. The less carbon dioxide you have in your body, the harder it is for oxygen to reach your brain, your heart, all the cells in your body, your muscles. So that's a critical issue that people are quite shocked about when they hear that. That it's the carbon dioxide, it's like a, a balancing, it's called the Bohr effect. As the carbon dioxide goes up in your in your body and in your bloodstream the oxygen that's bound to your hemoglobin releases easier it, it unbinds easier and and goes into the tissue better faster wonderful i think that was really important to to know this that it's what we think it is but it isn't <laughs> and that you are such well trained and knowing about it and wonderful thank you for this information that will help a lot of people and especially me too <laughs> wonderful thank, thank you, you for the conversation and have um yes stay so productive and so spreading your what you're knowing and that you're sharing your knowledge to all of us and have a really nice sunday evening now <laughs> <laughs> oh, for me it's evening but you're in the middle of the day <laughs> of the day yes. yes thank you so much christina it was lovely lovely talking with you yes thank have you. a good day goodbye bye <laughs>